It has been 18 years since the release of the iconic Desert Treasure 1 quest, and today we are finally getting the follow-up quest, Desert Treasure 2. This is said to be the most ambitious quest ever made in Old School RuneScape, and will take over 4 hours to complete with a guide. But of course... We don't have that today, so this might take a while. Initially, this quest would bring a completely new prayer book, but due to tuning issues, this idea was scrapped. However, there are still plenty of rewards for completing this new quest. As you finish the quest, you will have access to four new bosses, which drops the new tier 80 versus magic armor, upgrades to the ancient scepter, the soul reaper axe, and last but not least, upgrades to the dagon of king's rings. System update in 3 minutes and look at all these people prepared for the quest to do it. And we also have some mods over here as well, a mod Halo right there. And up here we have a bugged penguin, mod Sarni. Finally, the servers are up and uh, we have now picked a less populated world to begin the quest. This is going to be a very long journey, and the quest has now started. So here's the names of the four new bosses. The Whisperer, Vardorvis, they all have a pet individually. So there's going to be four new pets for boss hunters. The Leviathan, and lastly, if we go up here, the Duke as well. Yo, first boss fight, already five minutes into the quest. Not the most difficult though, it seems. First puzzle of the quest, completed. Alright, so it seems like you can now choose your journey, how you want to complete this quest, as it's divided into four parts of the big NPCs of the quest, so let's begin at the top. Okay, we have the first new area, the Stranglewoods. This area looks so cool. Wait, I just noticed, why does it say healthy on the top of my screen and I'm getting infected now? Okay... Oh no way, we have tower defense in RuneScape now, and uh, I've actually always been a big fan of tower defense, I'm not entirely sure how this all works, but uh, seems to be able to get like a bunch of supplies from doing these puzzles, barricades and stuff like the one I put up here, and we mostly just have to protect this guy. I did basically everything wrong and I still managed to do it, so that, <laughs> that was very easy. And finally, we had the first bigger boss of the quest, Vardoria. So let's go over what this boss fight was like. My first attempt, I tried both magic and ranged, and turns out that is very ineffective versus this boss. So I would highly recommend, and what I had the most success with was melee. The first mechanic you have to deal with are these axes that are being thrown across the entirety of the map. If you get hit by them, you get damaged and also take bleed damage. Just like the Muspa, the boss also spawns these white squares you have to basically just move out of. After a while, the boss will stun you and you will have to click on these four squares on the screen to remove the stun. I did not fail any of these, they are very easy to do. But I imagine if you do fail them, you will take a big hit. Additionally to all that, sometimes you will see this small guy peeking up its head and shooting out a blue projectile. This turns off your prayer basically every single time. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to be countering this. I tried protecting magic as soon as it pops its head up, but that still removes my prayers. There it is. That was actually pretty difficult. But as soon as you kind of learn how to dodge the throwing axes, most of the things comes down pretty easily. Surprise, Kasonde is a betrayer. This boss fight is extremely easy as long as you're not using melee because all you have to do is just not let the boss hit you and avoid everything he throws on the ground. So if you go with any ranged or probably magic gear as well, you should pretty much be fine. And we get the first medallion of the quest. I guess this is the loop of the quest. Basically get all these medallions, use them on the four statues, and then something will happen in the middle. So let's use the first one. And that is now completed. It is time for the second area of the quest, which is called the Scar. Okay, so this is kind of like an abyssal area, makes sense. There is nothing on the map for this one, so I guess it's kind of a dungeon. I'm not gonna lie, that actually looks kind of good. This area is definitely a bit different than the last one. The last one was more combat-oriented, meanwhile this one is way more puzzle-oriented. Basically, you complete a bunch of small and pretty easy puzzles, and at the end of it, you burn a piece of a ship. You have to do this three times in total, and after that, you can actually fight the final boss. This boss, by the way, is absolutely stunning. It looks so cool, and I just love how this boss was designed. It is actually an extremely simple boss fight, at least during the quest. All you have to do is prayer flick. That is literally 
99% of this fight. As always, blue are magic, green is ranged, and yellow or orangey is melee. Also during the fight, sometimes rocks will fall from the ceiling and you will have to avoid these otherwise you take a bunch of damage. And when I say it's going to be a prayer flicking fight by the way, I mean it's a prayer flicking fight. Look how fast this is going, at a certain point I just kind of gave up because I couldn't keep up with it. During the quest of course, the bosses are kind of nerfed, so if I would just tank all of these in an actual fight, you would probably die. And that is it, that is the second boss out of four for some gold ore completed. Two out of four medallions now in my pocket. And with the Leviathan defeated, we are heading over to the third area of the quest, the Lazar Under City. Oh my god, this area looks so incredibly cool, and it even has a map, alright, this is a very big area. From my very novice observations, I think we have to go into the Shadow Realms and somehow kind of like purify them or something when i'm in here i'm losing sanity all the time and i have no idea really what to do here i don't know if i can destroy this but yeah i guess we'll figure something out yeah basically can't enter any houses because it says you can't reach that and that is of course because in the shadow realm those tentacles are blocking i just can't see them in the normal world so somehow i have to get rid of them I feel like I can't really explain this area too well, it's mostly just run around, try to find the schematics and shadow keys, and use them on different areas to unlock things that probably are very useful in this area. First schematics, we got the shadow blocker. Uh, not really sure what this is useful for, but you can only place it in the normal world. If we go into the shadow realm, it is still going to be there though, so definitely you have to place some stuff in the normal world to then make use of them in the shadow world. We found the use for the light source, you have to place it when opening doors in the Shadow Realm because you have to be in the Shadow Realm to actually enter the doors and that keeps my sanity pretty high because opening the door took ages. Second schematic unlocked. Yo, what did I just unlock? What is this? A revitalizing idol? That sounds like something that increases my sanity or something when I'm in the realm. Alright, let's see what happens when I press it. Yep, I get full sanity again, allows me to run way further. And I should be able to burn these tentacles as well and get in? Yes, I can. It has been like an hour of doing this. I'm so happy I'm getting the last schematics, finally. It is actually bossing time. The last tentacles we will burn before the actual boss fight. So let's have a quick chat about the Whisperer. This boss fight can only really be defeated by magic, so definitely go with that. During the fight you will get attacked by ranged and magic attacks, the magic ones being the blue ones and the ranged one being the red ones. After each attack, also these four tentacles will go into your position and you have to move from them. The boss also has a couple of special attacks that doesn't seem to be going in a specific order. The first one, the boss teleports to the middle of the room and spawns all these eggs. You have to go into the shadow realm to actually see which ones you need to walk on. Walk on the ones that are glowing lighter than the other ones. When the second mechanic occurs, the boss will spawn in the back of the room and you will have to go into the shadow realm again to see the specific hit point level of all of these pillars as there's going to be a massive explosion and depending on the HP of the pillars, you know if if you can stand behind them or not. And for the last big mechanic, it teleports in the middle of the room again and spawns a bunch of these ghosts and they actually heal the boss and will damage you at the end of their cast. Now the thing is, I haven't really found any possible way to deal with all of them and the only thing I can recommend is kill as many of them as you possibly can. The only thing that really changes at the end of the fight is that it starts attacking magic ranged magic instead of doing magic 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 ranged ranged ranged. So you will have to do more of a jad prayer switching situation. Also the last part of the fight you have to prayer switch and run all the time to avoid tentacles hitting you. Are you- No way! No way are you kidding me! Oh thank god. Okay we got it on the third try of the boss. Definitely a more difficult one. And that is the third medallion picked up. Bro, is the medallion literally roasting my house? And finally, we are entering the fourth and last area of the medallions, the Gorok's prison. Well, that didn't go so well. No way, they included the area where I bring the people that don't subscribe to Alonescape. Pretty much what I've gathered so far from doing the Duke part is that it's basically just you being stuck in a prison and you have to find a bunch of keys Meanwhile being chased by NPCs like this, being absolutely horrifying, and the goal is basically to get all the keys going from Sapphire all the way up to Diamond. 
After you use your diamond key, you will regain your gear and you will have to do a boss fight that is rather unique. All you actually have to do is survive. You don't need to do any damage to the boss whatsoever, so just run around the middle pillar as much as you can, kite the boss, and just take no damage. Well, that was easy. And finally, for the boss without a doubt that looks the most cursed ever in old school runescape, Duke Succulus. To begin the fight, go either east or west up the stairs and you have to pass these three laser-eyeing NPCs. Avoid them, otherwise you will get hit a massive amount of damage. Click on these mushrooms and pick three from each side. After that, use your pestle and mortar to ground it down. When you have ground down both the mushroom types, run into the middle of the arena and go to the western part of the arena and mine this salt. I'm not quite sure how many you need, but get around 20. With all of these materials, now fill the barrels and they are going to be completely filled and you can actually drop all the excess material you crafted. Loot the barrels and you're going to be getting these potions and they are used on the boss to activate the fight. And as soon as you use the potions on the boss, this is what happens. The boss comes alive and you can actually DPS it. Now between most attacks, it's going to do this slam on the ground and you basically just have to hit the boss once, walk back and repeat. Occasionally, the boss will also open a massive eye with a massive screen effect as well. Just walk behind anything when this happens. The boss also puts out poison sometimes on these squares, and when he does that, you just have to swap over to the other side. Also, when passing, make sure you pray magic, because sometimes you get hit by these blue magic hits. I think that's it, and that is the last hit on the final of the four bosses. Let's get the last medallion. Wait, did I just get 11 bronze chain bodies? That is it, the fourth medallion obtained. I have a feeling we have a last boss fight on our hands. You know what? I could go through every single small detail about this mini boss fight close to the end of the quest, but I feel like there is a better way to explain this boss fight. When fighting this boss, it feels like you are fighting a PKer who is using a cheat client. As soon as you swap protection prayer, it just instantly attacks with something else every single time. So basically just attack with whatever it's not protecting against and run around and do whatever. You just eat food and you should be fine. Final boss fight time? Let's get it. The final boss fight is actually rather simple. You have to fight four new type of Barrows brothers, which are actually the NPCs you helped during the quest. The first one, all you have to do is put the assassin inside of the white clouds, just like you did in the Seekers of the North quest, and you will actually be able to damage him. The second boss actually gave me quite a lot of confusion until I kind of accidentally solved how to kill it. The boss actually spawns these minions, and when you stand behind them, instead of tanking a massive hit the boss does on you, it will instead hit a minion, tanking it and allowing you to kill the boss. The third boss only has two mechanics, throw these vials on the ground, leaving pools you cannot walk into, and also a massive explosion where you just have one safe zone you need to stay in, and that's about it. And for the final boss, there is only two mechanics you have to deal with. Portal spawning, which you have to kill because they spawn minions. And secondly, just dark circles on the ground that spawns electricity. Move out of them. And that is the quest done. Five quest points, Ring of Shadows, Ancient Lamp, ability to use Ancient Rings, access to four new bosses. And I expected this to take eight hours. And with editing, doing mini guides for every single boss, it has now been 8 hours and 4 minutes. Let's also try out the Ring of Shadows. This is going to be kind of bare bones for now because you can actually unlock teleports to all the new bosses using this ring. But for now, I'm going to charge it with a couple of runes and the only teleport I actually have is to the Ancient Vault, which is basically useless. If you guys want to see me take on all the new bosses outside of the quest with them being vastly more difficult, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one.